Hey everybody, um, this is going to be a little walkthrough tutorial of another fashion illustration. The subject is supposed to be um, a Game of Thrones inspired illustration. I, um, I looked at a bunch of the things Daenerys wore in season seven and kind of just drew my own inspiration from it and gave her a bit of a feminine gown. So I'm gonna get right into it. I have the first layer done with the um, same pencil I always use. It's a 2H. Um, I'm not really particular to any brand. I just use whatever 2H I have laying around. So that's what I have sketched here. And then I, I'm gonna go in first with the um, skin tone using an E00. And I'm using the brush end. So you're not really going to see much of her face in this composition, just a little hint of her cheekbone. And then for the shadow layer, I'm gonna use E11. Um, I think it's called Barley Beige. I'm gonna do that just in some <clears throat> selected areas, not too much. I'm use it a little bit here. And then what I'm gonna do really quick is go back in with that E00 and blend it out. She does have pretty fair skin. And you can use that blending technique I did with any colors. Um, I do it a lot with those two though. So you want to make sure that you have the original color that you put down accessible because it does dry quickly. So um, as soon as you go in with that darker tone, go right back in with this and that will help blend. For her gown, I'm gonna kind of wing the colors. I have a bunch of neutral browns selected and I'm gonna kind of play with it as I go. But starting at the top, I'm gonna use E70. It's called Ash Rose. I love this color, I use it for a lot of different things. Um, but the top of her gown right here, I'm gonna go in with this and it's, this part up here is meant to be textured. I wanted it to kind of look like um, almost scaly. So I'm gonna kind of just dab it on and then I will also reinforce the texture after with some pens. And I also want it to look curved around her collarbone. So I'm gonna make it darker up here. So I haven't even added another color yet. I'm just using that same color. And I'm also making it darker down here. So hopefully that gives it a little bit of a curve. Also going to do the lower half this color, but we're gonna build it up more, um, meaning it won't remain this color. The top will remain this color, but I'm gonna go in with this. She's a bit of a mermaid style gown on. Comes down here. I'm gonna keep this part loose because I wanted it to be a little bit pleated. Is running out a bit. <laughs> I'm 
So I'm still using Ash Rose E70. And I want her to have a belt. I'm debating on doing a gray or a brown, but I think I'm gonna do a dark warm gray for her belt. I think I made that a little too dark. <laughs> so I'm gonna go in actually with a, um, this is just a white colored pencil. This is a Prismacolor, but I'm not really faithful to any brand of um, colored pencil. So this one works just as good. And I'm just gonna give her a little bit of a highlight here and texture. I think I just made it a little too dark. Um, we are going to darken up this part so when, it's not going to be as high contrasting, which is good. Um, so I'll get into that now, actually. I'm going to go, this layer is E70. I'm going to go over it with E71. It's called Champagne. And I'm going to start from where the fabric collects right here. And go into this pleating. Keeping it super light. And if you saw on my last video, I mentioned how I, I like to work from the bottom up a lot because it creates those softer lines. I'm doing that a bit here as well. So it's going to meet at the ground or fall at the ground rather, and then gather up here. So I'm certainly using artistic license here. This dress is not very <laughs> practical, but I thought it would be a fun spin to what she, um, actually wore. And I think I'm going to actually go over this and make it darker as well to blend it a bit. And then right here where the fabric collects, I'm gonna go over that because I do want there to be like a distinct separation between this smooth part here and then the texture of the, um, the skirt, the bottom of the skirt. And because this is a fairly warm tone, I'm gonna now go in with a gray on this bottom half and create more pleating. And I'm gonna do that with N6, so it's a neutral gray. Just adding some dimension. I don't wanna do this everywhere. I wanna keep this a bit controlled. This is more like the color of her actual costume, or I don't wanna say costume, but um, what she wore in season seven. This is the color that it, that more accurately um, would be, but we're just kind of playing around with it. It was a very kind of just, the texture was beautiful, but it was a very kind of gray um, design. 
and I wanted something a bit more feminine. And as a nod to the texture of what she actually wore, I'm gonna kinda just create some texture with this. So I'm going back in with E71, and I'm just kinda doing some zigzags with my marker here. No specific pattern, just kind of keeping my hand moving. I'm using the brush end. I kind of use the brush end for most things. I very rarely use the chisel. Um, the chisel end would be over here, but if I have to cover a really large area, I might use it um, for stuff like that, but I'm typically always using the brush end because I like that it has, like what I'm doing now, I can use it to be more precise if I'm holding it more upright or if I wanted it to flow, I can just turn it to the side like I did down here, but for now we're going to use it this way. Just creating that texture. I might even add just a tiny bit of a shadow up here. Okay. And before I get into her hair, Part of the design I wanted was for this piece to come down here at her shoulders and make it kind of like a train or a cape. Um, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna start off very light because I'm not sure where it's gonna go. So I'm gonna start off with W1, which is warm gray one. And I'm just gonna bring it down And then it meets, meets all the way down here. I want it to be sheer so we can kind of cover. We don't have to worry about messing up the, the gown we just created. And the markers usually dry lighter than you think they will. So we're just gonna start light for now. I think it would be beautiful too with a lacy element, but I don't think adding lace <laughs> would make sense for this character. So I'm just gonna leave it as is, just as straight down. And the one thing that did happen when I just created this cape design was that it kind of, because this was a lighter shade, than this. It just kind of almost acted as an eraser and pulled some of that up. But you don't have to worry, you can go back in with that color and just redo it a bit. There we go. All right, so we have our cape. I might, I'm gonna let this sit for a bit. I'll probably add a little bit more to it after I do the hair. Um, I'm going to move on to the hair. So she has almost platinum colored, almost gray white hair. Um, so I have to go even lighter than I normally would with my typical blondes. 
So I'm going to start with E41, pearl white, and then use E42, sand white, as my um, shading color. So I'm going to leave the part where it's a braid exposed for right now and just do the rest of the hair, which is sweeping to the side. You can kind of see it under the cape there. And then I'll go into the braid. It's so small of a detail, so you don't have to get super detailed with the braid, but just to indicate that it's there. I do have a reference photo up that I'm using for the braid. I'm gonna make sure I got all of her crisscross and complexities correct. So we have the first layer done. It's super light, but that's what our hair color looks like. And I'm just gonna go in now with that second color to create more definition in certain areas. Don't panic if it looks dark, it's going to dry a little bit lighter. And then she did have a bit of a gold clasp. So I'm going to use E31 for that little gold piece. And then just to define it a little more, I'm going to use E55. All right, so we have pretty much the whole thing colored. And now that it's the capes had a chance to settle a bit, I'm gonna go in with, let's see what color I wanna use. All right, I'm gonna try doing W2 again. And actually this time I am gonna use the chisel end just to get a sharper line. So right now I'm just going back over what I sketched over. I'm actually going to do the same with her skin tone, just a bit. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the color for now. <laughs> I'm going to go in with these Copic multi liners. I used them in my last video. Um, they come in a bunch of different line weights. Like I've mentioned before, I have a lot of them. I think I have all of them actually. I usually use the 0 0.03 because it's so small. Um, so I'm going to go in with that. Just for now, where you see skin. a tricky angle because I wanted her to just kind of be resting, maybe holding up a piece of hair with her left arm, so you don't really see much of the left arm or the right arm. You just see that it's bent inwards. And her right hand is just kind of resting at her side. I might 
do this little gold piece down here as well. I'm definitely not going to use this black ink for her hair because it's so, so, so light. I think having that dark black on the hair would be just too much. Oh, and while I forget, she also has this really cool, I think these are dragon skulls, but because it's so detailed, you really won't see it. But it's this um, beautiful strap that I'm going to do. Comes around her waist. And then this top piece is a dragon head too, but like I said, it's super small. So we're just going to do a bit stylized. And then for the garment outline, I always use um, this black colored pencil, which <laughs> if you saw my last video, it's small. I need to get a new one, but it's the Faber-Castell Polychromos in black. Um, I really like it. It's very soft. And someone also asked me if this clogs up their multi-liners. And I, I, haven't, I never really thought about that, but I haven't experienced it because I usually don't cover them over the same area, if that makes sense. So I'm not gonna go, I wouldn't draw this line with this and then draw over it. They never really intersect, but also I usually draw with ink before I do that. So that could be a way, if you're experiencing that, that's a good way to get around it. But this is not very waxy. The Faber-Castell colored pencils, in my experience, have been really smooth. So I wouldn't think that you'd have that kind of wax resistance that you get with other um, colored pencils, but play around with it and see what happens. So now I'm gonna go into the garment and just start outlining. I really need to get a new colored pencil. This is hard to handle. Some, I um, gave her a few buttons up here. I thought those were fun. My um, my good friend and I, she was visiting me, and she was trying on bright uh, bridal gowns for her wedding next year, and all of the dresses have <laughs> these beautiful buttons down the center. So I guess I was inspired by that to do the buttons. That's all I looked at for a week. Um, I'm drawing now just those little scales that I wanted to put in there. I guess that could be a nod to her dragons. I love texture. It's really hard to sometimes to depict texture um, with markers if you're thinking on such a small scale. Um, so I think the way I do it is just to do something stylized, kind of like what I did with right here in the dragon's head. You're not gonna see a full dragon head when you look at something drawn so small. So you just kind of do the illusion of it. And I don't know if you saw right here, but I didn't just draw a straight line down. I kind of, zigzagged in here too because I do want her her um, lower half to look texturized as well. And then this is where that pleating starts. Awesome. And then for her cape, I'm going to use, um, it's the same brand of colored pencil. I was just using the Faber-Castell Polychromos. 
I'm going to use it in this, um, oh my gosh, this name again. <laughs> I hate this word. Um, it's nougat, <laughs> but we're going to outline, we're going to outline with that just so it's a bit softer. I'm probably going to use this to outline her hair as well. And so the thing to keep in mind with this sheer part is that you're going to see the front of it too. I wanted it to kind of come around her and I'm thinking that it opens up in the front. So you are going to see this front piece a little bit and maybe you'll see where it opens. So I'll draw a line there. I might rethink that later, but for now, that's what I wanted it to look like. I can always edit that out. I'm going to go in again. And then very, very, very slightly, I'm going to do a tiny outline with that black. I'm gonna sharpen the brown color again and work on her hair. She's got a lot of braids going on. And then whenever I'm drawing hair, I draw a little bit outside the line, just like that, to give the hair some movement. Probably not up here because this is gonna be tightly pulled back, but once, once it collects in that low ponytail area, anything below here can kind of freely move. All right, so now that I have everything outlined and colored, I this is about where I would look at it and figure out where I need to add more contrast, more value. Um, so right away, I'm just seeing some areas I definitely wanna work on. So I'm gonna go back in with E71, the champagne color, and add more texture down here. A little more up here. I want up here to almost look a little shiny. And even down here we can add some. And I'm not really worried about the marker smudging the black outline. I think it actually looks kind of cool. I might even reinforce this line here just a bit. So that about completes the illustration, I do sign it typically with the same pencil I used to draw it with. And just a recap, I'm gonna go over the colors I used. Okay. 
So I have the E00 for the skin, the base skin tone, the E11 for the shadow. I used W1 and W2 on the cape. I used E71 on most of the dress. And under that, I used e, E70 Ash Rose. I used N6 a bit and N7 on the skirt, or the lower half of the dress. Her hair, I used E41 and E42. And then her hair clip, I, or um, the, the wrap for her hair, I used E55 and E31. I can't find my E31, I must have put it away. And that is it. So thank you again for watching. I hope you find these helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Happy sketching.